If you follow the series, you know that our HEC can finally read from core hope memory, the read-only memory where programs reside. For the first time in a long while, the computer is using its own memory, the, the core rope, the simulated core rope at this time. So that's a significant step. It also tells us that we can likely dump the ropes at the Computer History Museum. Actually, our AGC has simulated core rope used for development with no permanent software on it. But our favorite place, the nearby Computer History Museum, has an AGC on display. And still plugged in it is a set of original core ropes. We believe they contain a program for which there is no record. We think we can recover it. And the museum has granted us access to their precious artifact to attempt the recovery. There we go. Right next to his brother. So here's the com computer, ah, computer History Museum AGC. We just noticed it's missing two modules here. A1 and A7. But the B tray is complete, minus the cover for B12. And these are the two core rope modules we are interested in. Uh, this is AGC 200M, as it says written on the side there. Uh, 200M was the very first operational Block 2 AGC. So this is serial number one, uh, ours is serial number 14. But they're both part of the same series of 15 prototypes, so they're very similar. This one, um, ours, ours is ma matches a set configuration. You know, it was one that was used for a test. This one was MIT's development AGC, and so it has all sorts of interesting features to it. None of these modules go together. <laughs> uh, some of these are like engineering prototype serial number one. This is the first module that was created. And then some of the logic modules are like flight model logic modules, you know, so mm -hmm. it's, it's a big mishmash. And uh, can you point to the modules we are going to slide up? Yep, this one and this one. So are those the correct positions in the AGC? Not at all. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. B2... I think B2 is actually in the right spot. B1 is in the wrong spot and its cover is upside down. Uh, these are retread 50. Uh, retread revision 50. Uh, the first modules that were manufactured for Block 2 were retread revision 44. So uh, retread was, they called it retread because they were retreading the steps they had taken with Block 1 and just rewriting all their Block 1 software for Block 2. Uh, but retread 44 was written before the hardware AGCs existed, before this thing was built. And so they were testing it only against an emulator they had written, and the emulator wasn't perfect, and so Retread 44 can't pass all of its tests. And Retread 44, we have a copy. Right, we have it a doesn't listing. work. Right, we have a listing from Don Isles. It, it, it will run, but it, it can't pass its self-tests. Mm -hmm. uh, so Retread 50 was the program that they released right after that to correct those flaws, and also, I believe, add some initial lunar module system test code. And we don't have a copy of that one. Right. This, is the, the this is the only copy we know to exist of Retry 50. That came out easy. It's only got the one jack and screw. <laughs> slide it off So we knew about that one that the uh, we had figured out last time that the, the cover was not attached anymore. I think your best bet is just to uh, to pull it out without the cover. Yeah, we have only one screw. Unless you can put it the other way around. The cover is yeah. pinned on yeah. the other side, so that the engine is. Oh yeah, that's a perfect. Oh, it comes out, no problem. Not a scratch. I'm fairly certain, I'm not completely positive, but I'm fairly certain that that cover was on upside down. So I flipped it over, so I think it should be on around the right way. <laughs> it also has it written on the case. Says retread 50. 50. So we got, we got the 
core rope modules out and then uh, Mike you had uh, come up with a test plan here okay. so this is the set reset and inhibit lines and clear lines to make sure that current can flow through these modules uh, because if no current can flow through the modules then there's a risk of damaging the drivers in the AGC. Yeah, there's a risk of damaging our AGC. Right, no, no the no, modules, no, we no. can't hurt the modules but the, hurt, the modules can hurt right, us. Right, 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 exactly. <laughs> okay. so, yeah. Right, we collected the, put these into the table. But uh, how does it look so far? It's good? So far, so good. So this yeah. is the last check mark. Everything that should be connected is connected. Like Check that good? So while Mike is setting up here, I want to point out that we had to fabricate some uh, Terminator jumper modules here. Mike made them so because it's only two modules of core rope and we want to terminate those uh, four that are not used so we we use the samtech pins to good effect this is quality control at work right here we put them the right side up and in the right bay what do you say ken mm, that looks good <laughs> all right so the monitor is currently configured to inhibit alarms and uh, stop the computer on its first attempt to, fex, to fetch an instruction. So okay. as soon as it comes up, it'll halt it and uh, prevent any memory accesses from happening. Right, and so then we're going to check the check current. Check the current, make right. sure that it's in family with what we've seen before with the rope simulator boxes. And then after that, you wanted to do steps for a few instructions? Yeah, step for a few instructions to make sure that uh, it's fetching the instructions correctly. Okay, three, two, one, zero. One point six five amps. That's good. That sounds about right. Its first instruction fetch was a TC to four thousand, which is the reset vector. So we caught it before it did any memory accesses at okay. all. So now I'm just going to step it a few times. It's working. We're getting we're getting data from the ropes. Cool. Whoa. So I'm going to set all of the bank switches to configure which banks we want to dump. Since we only have two modules, we only need the first um, 12 banks. Mm -hmm. So you're about to read the ropes, yep. dump them. Okay. Uh, uh, when, when do we know it's going? As soon as I press save. Okay. So three, two, one, zero. Blonk. Did it. There it goes. Dump, 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 dump. Okay. We got it. Yay. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, these, the, were the lights blinking at all? A little bit. Okay, but not much. I expected much more activity. So, and you're going to do it uh, another time, so you can compare two. Okay. Okay, ready? Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah, I see there's a little bit of blinking. This is just so anticlimactic. Can you compare your two dumps? They're the same. Oh, sure, there's no errors. Yep, no errors, so nothing shows up here. Okay. Uh, if I compare retread revision 44 with retread revision 50, which we just dumped, these are all the differences, which is more than I was expecting. Ken is in the back room already trying to analyze the dump. I threw this together last night to disassemble it and analyze it so it's not. Not the best code, but I should have it working in a few minutes. Excellent. A couple strands that have like parity errors on half the bits. Ah. Uh, yeah, I'm not be diodes, huh? Yeah, I'm comparing Ouch. words here. So, what do I have? Second sector. So, I have retread 44 on the left, retread 50 on the left. Right. So, so word 2 the parity is wrong and it goes downhill from there. Ouch. Oh, yeah. It looks like R1 strand 1 and R1 strand 9 are missing a bit. Just one? Um, we don't know. At least well, one. At least one. Th those two strands, it's like half the, half the data has parity errors, which is kind of what you'd expect if you're missing a bit. Yep. So in, in simple terms, you have some part of the memory done very well, yeah. and some part of the memory, uh, the they can't tell from there's an error checking 
bit in, in the memory so we can tell when it's not done correctly and so we're missing at least at least one bit if it's just one then we can reconstruct that if it's more than one bit per word then we have to use different <laughs> harder methods <laughs> there is a extra bit high on this word yeah i don't see any stuck bits Ooh. I mean, I'm seeing zeros in all the positions and sevens in all the positions. So, unless I miscounted something. You know, the two strands might have different errors, so let me... Yes. Well, the good news is that the deltas, like, it, looking in these, these big red sections, mm -hmm. Retread 50 has not shifted a around a lot from Retread 44, so mm -hmm. it should be very easy to pick out like a bit that is stuck high mm -hmm. because the words are all in the same spot, right? Mm -hmm. So it's if there's just a single bit difference and there's a parity error, we know it it should be what Retread 44 has. So this strand is a portion of the memory, right? They were segmented like five, in five, twelve words. So as far as I can tell, there is a, uh, a bit that is stuck high in strand one, and there is a different bit that is stuck high in strand nine, which means it's not a problem with a particular bit. It's something specific to those individual strands, which means either a selection diode or uh, resistor is uh -huh either not working or shorted out. Right, so the good news is that if it's a single bit stuck, we can recover it from the parity information. Yes, also because Retread 50, in, in the places that were affected, Retread 50 looks very similar to Retread 44. Okay, so you, you have the Rosetta Stone here to, yes. decode, to decipher the code. Ooh, okay, that we're feeling a little bit better than five minutes ago. Want to try to run it? Yes. Mike has uh, recreated the original data. Uh, could tell what the fixed bit, what the wrong bit was, and replace it with the right bit using the extra parity bit, which is present in this machine for error, just for that purpose, for error uh, checking. And he thinks he has recover the original code and he can run it and if he does uh, you expect your disk key to work this time right? yep that's the theory ready okay so mike's going to try to run his fixed code so you are running it from the original rope except the parts yes that were mangled you have unmangled them yes so we're replacing banks zero and four through the monitor okay go for it power up and I can now type into the display. There you go. All right. So let me do uh, you fix it. 15 mount 01 enter. So this sequence should start the self test and we are seeing, seeing comp acti blink. Uh -huh. And I'm not getting a program alarm, which is what would happen on retread 44 at this stage. So this means that they fixed yeah, they the They fixed the problem. Yep. Fixed, right. He's running it. Yeah, and you can see a lot more activity going on Yay. in the registers. Here. Yeah, look at it, Carl. It's just remarkable. Fabulous. He has this key, it takes his keystrokes. It's not crashing where we tried 44 crash. So does it have a disk key light test? It does, look at that. That test the light's good. Beautiful disk key. When, when was the retread uh, made? Early in the process, right? Very early. So we have one block one listing, uh, Solarium 55, which is what flew on Apollo 4 and 6. Uh -huh. And Retread 44 is from like a year before our, our oldest block one listing, that, that Solarium. So it's, it's super old. Wow. It, this is like 65. Is this one of the first programs to work on the AGC, yeah. on yeah. the block two AGC, right? Yeah. Is it the first one? 
Retread 44 was the first one they would have tried and it didn't work. It didn't work, work right? Yeah. <laughs> because you tried it and it didn't work. It, it runs, you can do verbs and nouns and stuff on the okay. Disney, but it can't pass the self-test. Okay. So um, the first functional program. Yeah, the first, the first fully functional one. <laughs> well, congratulations, guys. You, you've done it. And you know, I don't think we're really through with, uh, with this. So we're going to keep keep going and mm -hmm. you know a lot of other things are probably going to spin off from it right we uh, cover all, more ropes connect the disc key we want to fly a mission on it yep. right should we uh, pack the whole thing and uh, call it a successful mission here mm -hmm. and then and give uh, give the museum their modules back <laughs> Thank the watchful eye of the museum back there that allowed us to play with the core ropes. Thank you very much, uh, Computer History Museum. I we appreciate it.